Hello, this is Old Electronics Fan. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Today I want to uh, deal with a question that I've had, and others apparently have had as well, and that is, how is it possible for the B-plus line to be positive when it's connected to the cathode, which in order for the tube to conduct must be negative? Well, I'm going to start off really, really basic. I don't know who's going to be watching this. <clears throat> and I'm going to touch on uh, other things that uh, have to do with vacuum tube uh, power supplies. So, for, like I said, for some of you, many of you, this will be old hat. Uh, for others, this may be new stuff. Um, I hope that I can provide some useful information for somebody who needs it. And I'm going to start with this. So, of course, this is what our, our basic sine wave looks like. With a complete cycle, which would be half cycle, half cycle. We're dealing with vacuum tube power supplies, and these would be diodes, or this would be a diode. And we've got a battery attached to this little circuit, which gives a positive voltage to the plate and a negative voltage to the cathode. We could also represent this as the uh, power coming into this device, because this is the positive half of this wave. Because if you go back up to here, this is the zero line. Everything above the line is positive, everything below the line is negative. And so this would be the positive going portion of the wave. And while that wave is providing uh, voltage to this tube, this would, this would actually conduct, and that's what this little meter indicates, that when things are in this condition, the meter will conduct. Then we go over here and the battery has been reversed and now the plate is negative and the cathode is positive and you notice the meter is not doing anything. And of course this would be the bottom half of the wave supplying the voltage to the, the um, diode. Now the other part of this package, and it's actually the key to why the B plus line can be connected to the cathode, which must be negative, as we see here, is this. This is what happens when you have two resistances, or when you have resistances in series. So I want you to notice something. <clears throat> of course, we've got the negative side of the battery, negative, that makes sense, plus, plus. But we have here, plus and minus. So what will happen is if you connect your meter across here, and you put your negative probe here and your positive probe here, you'll read a positive volt, a voltage across the resistor. Negative lead here, positive lead here, you'll read a positive voltage here as well. And that's just the, the way that resistances in series work out, uh, or, or behave, I should say. And <clears throat> this is the key to why the uh, B plus can be pulled off from what should be a negative source voltage source. So, uh, by the way, I'm using information from the uh, Navy's uh, electronics training course, which you can find online. It's free. I'm in module 6, and we're on page 3-5 uh, is where I'm starting, and it doesn't really want to focus, does it? Alright, so this is a basic half wave uh, power supply. And you notice that I put here B plus and B minus. So this is the basic circuit. There's your B plus connected to the cathode. RL is the various resistive loads within the device being powered that are, that are across the B plus and the B minus lines. And to understand it, or to be able to see this clearer, they've rewritten it to this. And <clears throat> so what you have is, this is actually a series circuit. There's your load, and there's the, the tube. Now, vacuum tubes are typically around 500, I guess, rectifiers, maybe depends on the tube. But rectifiers are probably running about 500 ohms internal resistance. This resistor in this case is 10K, 
I put in the plus and minus just to make it clear that the, the, this, if you were to connect a meter across this, this would be plus, this would be minus. And this is the key to how you can connect your B plus line to the negative cathode and wind up with a positive voltage. Um, just to explain what they've done over here, what they're pointing to here is this is 10K, this is 500 ohms roughly. Most of the voltage is going to drop across this higher resistance and very little of the voltage is going to drop across this much lower resistance. I did notice an error in the book. This should actually be 404 volts <clears throat> because the total voltage here is 425 and obviously you can't have more than 425 in your circuit which it would be if you added these two up. So anyway, that's just kind of a side point. So but let's look at um, a full wave rectifier. <clears throat> now we're on page 3-7 and <clears throat> again you've got your AC source over here. You've got winding 1 and winding 2. And right now winding 2 is supplying a positive going wave and the current flows this way through the tube and back to the coil. And down here there's no current flowing whatsoever. Notice that the current flow is from minus to plus in this illustration. But now, <clears throat> this is what gets interesting. <clears throat> this, I need to explain a little bit. Now this is what you're going to see when th this a portion of the of the uh, transformer is being energized by a positive going wave or portion of the cycle, and once again you see the traffic traf or the current traveling from minus to plus, and once again traveling through the tube and back up here. And of course, this is a minus. This is a negative voltage, and this of course is plus. So here's where I wanted to get into a little bit deeper uh, than maybe was necessary. When you have a center tapped transformer, this output is going to be 180 degrees out of phase relative to this output <clears throat> when measured from the common to the outputs of both sides of the coil. If you look at a, a sine wave, <clears throat> a complete sine wave is 360 degrees. A half portion of the sine wave is 180 and a quarter is 90. I actually remember that from, I don't know how many years ago, I learned that. I was shocked. This orange line is indicating that this second portion is 180 degrees out of phase relative to this one. What that means is that when this wave is going positive, this wave is going negative. And when this wave is going positive, this wave is going to be negative. And that's how you get the alternating polarity here. It's because of the way a center trap transformer operates. It just puts things 180 degrees out of phase. And this is where you get the ability to do what they call a full wave rectifier. Because now you're getting, and I'll show you in the next, in the next section, but you're going to get more pulses per cycle than you would with a half-wave rectifier. All right, and we're going to go here and I'm going to show you this. Now this is the same basic idea, <clears throat> and they've drawn it with the <clears throat> center tap going to ground, which it should. This would you be? This would be your B minus. <clears throat> this would be plus. This would be your B plus. And they're showing two separate arrows. The dark arrow is one side of the uh, or one phase and the dotted arrow is the other phase. And the end result is you wind up with, with this coming out of, out of here. That's what this is. Load voltage. This is what you would see if you put a, a, an oscilloscope across this load. This part is what you would see here and here. You see that uh, Everything is the same ampl amplitude here and here. 
and you would see here, I, I, as I mentioned before, I'm repeating myself, <clears throat> this would alternate between being plus and minus, depending on which portion of the sine wave you're in. And this right here, I guess I need to explain a little bit. This represents the various loads within the device that you are powering that are across the B plus and B and B minus uh, connections. And because this is in series with this, you can have what I showed you earlier. You can have a plus here, and a minus here, and a minus here. And that's how that works. It's fairly straightforward once you see it. And I kept thinking about that, and I thought there was something along that line. Now, I've hooked up my oscilloscope, and I wanted to show you what it looks like. So what I've done is, let me go back here for a minute. My oscilloscope is connected with one probe here and one probe here, and then the uh, ground leads are connected to here. And you notice <coughs> that I've got two move this in a little bit. I've got two different sine waves. And so if we pretend that this one's starting here, we see that 180 degree phase out of phase for this second sine wave. Or either one. And you can also very easily see that when one sine wave is positive, the other one is negative. It's kind of pretty, it's kind of neat. When I decided to hook this up and look at it, <clears throat> I just I just wanted to see it visually and see what it looked like on an oscilloscope. And this old radio, <laughs> they put out, these things supply a lot of voltage. I believe if I measure across the uh, the transformer, uh, the uh, from, from point A to point B, there's 740 volts or so on this thing. So there's a lot of juice there. Uh, so for those who aren't aware, if you're playing with this old stuff, you're playing with a lot of voltage. So even with the center, even the, with it center tapped, you've got over 300 volts. From, from here to here and from here to here. So you definitely have to watch your fingers when you're playing with this stuff. Because you will know it when uh, you get bit by it. Highly recommended that you not be bit. So, I hope this is clear how this works. And uh, now that I see it, I realize how simple it is and how obvious it is. Uh, but I was scratching my head and I have a feeling that others were too, because I really could not understand how it's possible for the uh, for this I'm not here. I, I just didn't understand how this, which I knew had to be negative, could be positive or could be yeah could be negative, and yet have this line be positive. And it all has to do with how resistances in series behave. Pretty cool. So I hope this was helpful to some. Some of you are yawning and saying this is of no value to me. That's fine, but I hope uh, if it is of value to somebody, um, you got something out of it. And uh, thanks for stopping. Thanks for watching. And I appreciate uh, hopefully seeing people in the future as I do additional videos on various other topics. Thanks.